Hi, my name's Annie Lucas and I run Start to Stitch, a digital sewing academy and online community of sewists drawn from all over the world. Today I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous patchwork Christmas stocking and I'll take you step by step through every process you need to know in order to make it. You will need some wadding, uh, your, some scraps from your scrap pile, it's an excellent scrap buster, and then some slightly larger scraps in order to be able to make the lining and the back. First thing you're going to do is print your pattern, which you need to do at 100% uh, on your printing settings. And once you've printed it off, you need to chop out all of the pieces. There's one main stocking shape, and then a number of pieces which are number coded to create the patchwork on the stocking front. Once you've cut out your pattern pieces, you need to cut out your fabric. Um, so you will cut two pieces of uh, fabric for your lining and make sure that you, in the lining piece only, cut two notches so that you remember to leave a gap when you stitch it up. That will become uh, self-explanatory later two pieces of wadding in order to do your quilting, all of your many um, patchwork pieces from the scraps that you're using, and um, one rectangular piece that is four centimetres by 14 centimetres, which you will use to make your uh, hanging loop. The last piece that you will need to cut is the stocking back um, and the thing to remember about that is that you need to cut it with your fabric um, the right side up the right side facing up and the pattern piece facing down this is because the pattern pieces for the patchwork are designed so that it hangs this way and the patchwork is facing up this way and you therefore want the right side facing outwards on your assembled stocking. Once you've done all that, you can move on to um, assembling your patchwork front. After you've cut all your pieces, uh, you need to begin to assemble the patchwork front of your stocking. So I've laid all my pieces out here so you can see how they all tessellate together and they don't totally match right now because there's seam allowances included. The first part of this process is to take away these solid pieces and just stitch together these three sections. Uh, use the notches or balance marks to line them up. Again, the seam allowance will make sense when you, this overhang here will make sense when you stitch them together because you will see that then it becomes a straight line. And you need to stitch each section together, section by section, like I've done here. This is a good example. Um, and once you've done that, just press the seams open. Once you have stitched your um, pieced sections together, you need to then stitch those pieced sections to the solid sections that we removed in the last step. You do that with a one centimeter seam allowance as well. And once you have done that, you need to press those seams open on the back too. And you continue that all the way down until you have a fully pieced together and stitched patchwork stocking front. Once you've stitched all of your sections together and pressed them open at the back like this, you can move on to quilting your stocking front. So take a layer of the wadding that you've cut, put that on the table, and then lay your patched piece together um, on top of the layer so that it all lines up. Now you have a number of options here in terms of uh, how you quilt. You can not quilt at all. You can do what is called stitching in the ditch. That's where you stitch um, literally in the ditch of between the two pieces of fabric. So essentially the seam, so the stitching is invisible. So you get a nice kind of padded texture to your big sections. Um, you can stitch in the ditch and then quilt your individual sections like I have done on this sample. Um, and there's no rights or wrongs about how you do this. The whole point of this project is that it's not only a scrap buster, but it's an opportunity to uh, let your creativity run wild. So on this sample that I made when I was developing the design for this um, project, I've just kind of made it up as I've gone along with some of these 
quilting ideas. Um, this one I've used just follow the shape all the way round. This one is parallel lines following one of the lines on the section. Obviously this is a grid. This is a slightly larger grid at an angle. And this is the same as the other red section, but with a larger distance between each rows. The choice is completely up to you. The one thing I will say is before you quilt your sections, put a pin in each section to hold the outer layer to the wadding securely. And then when it comes to quilting your individual sections, just remove the pin for the section that you're working on and that will ensure that everything else will remain in place. Now it's time to make your loop. So take your piece of fabric that you cut that's four centimeters by 14 centimeters, fold it in half, right sides together, pin it if you need to, and then stitch along the length of the strip that you folded with a one centimeter seam allowance. You will then trim the excess off so it's within a few millimetres of the seam that you've just stitched and then you need to turn it through so that it makes a strip that's all sealed up that looks like that. You can alternatively use twill tape or ribbon um, and I can thoroughly recommend the use of a rouleau loop turner to turn this through otherwise good old-fashioned safety pin um, and a piece of string or your scissors will do the job just nicely. We're now going to assemble the stocking. So take your remaining layer of wadding and lay it on the table facing in the opposite direction to uh, the patched front that you've just made. And then take your back and lay that face up so the right side of the fabric will be facing up towards you and line that up with the wadding that's underneath. This fabric that I'm using doesn't it does have a right side and a wrong side, but it's quite hard to tell apart. But if you're using patterned fabric, the right side must be facing towards you. And then you're going to take your patched stocking piece and lay that face down on top of those two layers that you've just put together. You need to pin all the way round so that you've essentially made a sandwich with your two fabric layers in the middle and, and a layer of wadding on either side. <clears throat> line everything up and pin all the way around and then stitch around the sock part. Imagine it's a sock, you need to leave this straight line open, stitch around the sock part at um, a one centimeter seam allowance um, or slightly more if you feel that you're not gonna capture all of the layers in that one seam. Um, and then when you've done that, you need to notch in the curves turn it through and give it a press. Once you've turned it through and given it a good press, you can see it's really starting to look like a stocking now. Uh, take the strip that you made for the hanging loop and fold that in half and then open up the stocking at the top and you're going to pin the hanging loop in place across the side, the outside side seam of the stocking like this so it's just on on that part there as you can see and then stitch it at a one centimeter seam allowance or just inside one centimeters actually so maybe eight mil something like that just secure it in place so that it's there ready for when we put the lining in to assemble your lining you are going to put both lining pieces together, right sides together. So I'm using linen here, there's no right side or wrong side really, but if you're using a patterned fabric, you want them to be right sides together. Line them up and pin all the way around the sock part again. You're going to stitch a one centimeter seam allowance again, just around the sock part. So you're leaving this open at the top. Um, but where you have cut notches into this outside seam, leave that unstitched. So you're stitching that section there, leaving a gap, and then going all the way around to this point here with a one centimeter seam allowance um, and back tacking at the start and end of each seam. So I've stitched my lining and I've left the gap. 
and I've also just slightly trimmed the seam allowance. Not a lot, just a little bit to reduce some of the bulk. You don't need to worry about notching the lining because the lining is never actually really going to get turned through. So the, the way that you've stitched it is the way it will be in presentation in the, in the item when it's actually finished. So the next thing you're going to do is open up your stocking so that your stocking lining so that you can see inside it and then take your outer and slip that inside the lining all the way to the bottom so with something that's relatively small and snug like this I put my hand in it and then wiggle the lining all the way to the till my fingers are reached the end and then grab both sections all of it with my hand pull the hand out and then pull this lining up so it's nice and snugly inside tuck your loop down inside and then you can see now that we have it's going to seem for those of you that have never done any bagging out this is going to seem a bit strange but it will all make sense in a minute so we now have the stocking um, sort of inside out on itself pin or clip all the way around this open edge not together but open so as if you're still thinking about it as a sock that you need to put your foot in pin or clip all the way around this top edge lining up the seams at the sides and then use your sleeve arm on your machine and if your sleeve arm is um, too big for this then you can put it under your machine like this with the foot here and rotate it but you need to stitch a one centimeter seam allowance all of these layers together around this top part in a circle so you're not just to repeat you're not stitching that all flat together you're stitching in a continuous circle until you end up back where you started once you've stitched um, all the layers together around that top opening a little bit of magic is going to happen we open up the gap that we left in the side seam and pull the stocking outer through that gap and then you're turning the lining also so that it is right way out you can see now you have a very strange looking <coughs> Siamese stocking At this point you want to finish that gap, close that gap either by hand or by machine. I'm just going to stick a little pin in there. So once you've closed that gap up by hand or by machine, you can then push the, open up your stocking again and push the lining down inside all the way to the bottom. and then give the whole thing a press, a proper press and pay particular attention. There's a few loose threads there that I need to get rid of, but pay particular attention to this seam around the top where you've stitched it because that needs a, a jolly good press and you need to make sure it's nice and straight and lined up um, and make sure that your loop is coming out freely. And once you've pressed it, you can see you have a finished patchwork stocking from scraps. So there you go, an absolutely lovely patchwork Christmas stocking, perfect for hiding tiny presents in for your loved ones or just hanging on your tree and waiting to see what Santa brings.